Agate campers and staff and community who are tuning in to this virtual camp content. It is a joy to get to be with you all this morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Spencer Hatcher um, and I am coming to you from Berkeley, California. Um, I was before Rita Yo was the camp director at Claggett for a number of years. Um, before that, a, a senior staff um, and a junior staff and then a camper myself. Um, and so I am quite fond of Claggett and was grateful to get the opportunity um, to be with you all this year, even virtually. Um, some of the on-site staff asked if I would be willing um, to chat a little bit with you all about what it means to set aside sacred space, what it means to call space holy and then act like that, um, and what it means to do that, especially in this year where so many of the important places or the holy places, however we wanna talk about them, we're not able to get to. Um, Claggett in a lot of ways for me was always one of those holy places. Um, whether it was, you know, one of my parents driving me up that long lane or then when I was able to drive myself when I made that turn off of Bucky's Town Pike, um, I felt like I could take a deeper breath than I had taken in a really long time. Like I knew I was about to go to a place that was set aside, um, a place where I was gonna be able to be myself, a place where I was gonna be able to build relationships, um, and maybe even a place where I was gonna be able to meet God and know God in a new way. And I don't think that I am alone in that. One of the things I've heard time and time again is how important some of the physical places at Claggett are. Maybe that's the chapel, um, St. Andrew's Chapel or the Silo Chapel. Maybe that's getting to sit with one another and sing grace loud in the dining hall. Maybe it's at the campsite um, or on the river or in the midst of any number of other activities. But there's this sense that when you're at Claggett, we know that this is holy space. And this year we don't get to be there. And so the question is, what does it mean to set aside holy space, even in our homes, our backyards, our apartments, our bedrooms, kind of whatever we got? Is it possible to try and cultivate together that same feeling that a space is set aside? Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that. One of the practices uh, that I love is building altars. So if you go to church, um, you have seen an altar before. That's often where the pastor or the priest stands and celebrates communion or does prayers. And so there's a sense that this altar um, is specifically holy a holy place and that the things that are on the altar are holy things. And that's true of church, but it's also true of our other spaces and places. In a lot of ways, I think Claggett functions like an altar sometimes, like a place on which are holy things. And those holy things are the places where we have fun and build community together. Those holy things are also ourselves and the way we decide to be together. And so the question is, what do we do? What do we do together but apart in a time um, when we don't have that same holy space? And so I wonder if you would build an altar with me in your home. And I'll tell you a little bit about what that, what that means for me. So one of the things I did initially when I thought, what, um, what would I put? What would I put on my altar? I went around and tried to collect things that reminded me of people and of places that I love. So I grabbed my 
LaCroix magnet because it reminds me of all of the summers at Claggett where we tried to keep the staff refrigerator full of cold LaCroix. I grabbed this little toy um, that a parishioner gave me that makes me think of her and my relationship with that congregation. I grabbed a card, a goodbye card, uh, that someone made for me. I grabbed a mug that was my going away from Claggett mug when I was coming to seminary for the first time and was a little bit afraid to be driving 3,000 miles away from anyone that I knew. I pulled this cross that a friend of mine carved for me that sometimes I hold in my hand just to do something physical as I say prayers. I grabbed a shell that reminds me of a hike that I took with my family a couple of Christmases ago. I found it on the beach. And I put some candles. I'll show you the fullness of my altar in a bit. Um, and what I did was I set it up on a small end table that I could set in my living room. And so when I wake up in the morning and I go and walk to get my cup of coffee, um, I see it and I pay attention. And I have realized in the process that as I walk around my apartment, as I take walks outside, as I go for hikes, I find more objects that I think, I actually wanna put these in that place, put them on an altar and call them holy for a while. Um, and for me, all of my holy things remind me of people that I love, remind me of places that I love and miss and hope to one day be again. Um, they remind me of who I am because of my relationships with other people. Um, they remind me of the God who calls me to be in relationship with the folks that are around me. And so the practice of having this one physical space for me helps to kind of center me at a time when I don't have a lot of those places where I'm able to go because of the coronavirus. Um, you know, I'm on the other side of the country, so I wouldn't be able to be at Claggett, but our own summer camps out here are also virtual. So in a lot of ways, it feels pretty similar. And so I wonder if you would build altars with me in your home. Put on the things that make you remember the people that you love, the places that you love. Put on things that, um, that occupy your time, um, things that make you laugh, things that you are enjoying doing with your time. Put them on the altar and see what happens. There's no practice in particular that you need to do. Um, and things don't even need to stay on your altar. For a while, I had a cucumber on my altar, which was my first cucumber for my potted plant. I took it off because I also wanted to eat it. So things can come on and come off, but the practice for me of deciding that there is a space that I'm gonna pay attention to, even if it's just when I'm shuffling around it to move from my living room to my kitchen, has been a really great opportunity to pay attention and to remember those people that I love and those places that I love and that in fact I can continue to call things holy and set aside even in this really strange time where most of my time is spent in one particular place. I'd love to see what you come up with so I'm going to show you mine and then I'd invite you to post pictures. What altars do you build? Post pictures, if not of the whole thing. Um, comment, what is the first thing that you thought to grab and put on your altar and why? Um, what are the things that surprised you when you went to go and gather around? And what is it like to see that space set aside as holy? Now, excuse the bumpiness. I'll show you my altar. So this is mine. I've got cards and shells and a tablecloth that I love and a plant. 
build altars with me and then share what the experience is. I would love to hear it. And I really do look forward to getting to see the beautiful spaces um, and holy places that you set aside. Thanks for being with me. Bye.